Hey, it's Brett Michaels calling for the Big J. Yo, Brett, my man. How are you, dude? <laughs> I am doing awesome, man. Excited to come see you. Yes. <laughs> you're you're getting your rock on. The Get Your Rock I On have, Tour. That is it. I'm going to come there, get my rock on. I said I'm, I want to make people sure they understand. This is the pre-New Year's Eve mega party of all time. I'm planning on, on coming there. I'm going to throw down. I'm going to play all the poison hits, all the brand new stuff from Celebrity Apprentice and Rock Alive of all that music and mix it with some good cover stuff that I did, uh, remade some songs on the Good good Friends and, and Great Songs record that's coming out. Some just It's going to be an absolute mega party. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, here in Billings, we get a lot of good acts, but a lot of times, you know, they play like Monday mornings at 8 o'clock because they've got somewhere to be. It's like usually we don't get prime nights or dates with big artists so it's nice that we get a brett michaels show and that it's not on like a tuesday afternoon it's it's on like the big new year's eve weekend this is going to be the new year's eve i'm telling you we're going to do something cool there we're going to we're going to even have a thing where people a couple lucky winners are going to come up on the bus and get to throw down have a good time or at least get some pictures that they'll remember if you know what i mean <laughs> exactly <laughs> and billy's on a saturday that there i'm just going to say this. We've wanted to do this for a while, and knowing we're coming through, um, just trying to coordinate it, work it out with uh, with the theater, and just get everything done, that everything could be right, and make it a great show. Uh, that was the most important thing. I want to make sure that, that people, when they leave there, go, that rocked. That was awesome. Yeah. I mean, what, what's a, for one, let me just tell people, well, first off, it's December 29th, 8 o'clock at the Alberta Bear Theater, and tickets are on sale now at the ABT or at albertabearttheater.org, so people can buy tickets right now. What is a Brett Michaels stage show like? Like, the Get Your Rock On Tour, what should people expect to see that night with you on stage? Is it big lights? Is it is it pyro? Are you, do you take your pants off? What, what happened? There's lights. There's pants stay on because I don't want to lose the crowd. Okay, you know <laughs> we're going to keep the pants mostly on, and uh, but it's uh, it's really here's what a Brett Michael show is. It, it opens up, you know, each night we kind of figure out in the set what we want to open up with. That night we've already got it down. I don't. I'm going to come out there full energy. It's big party even before the show starts the energy is insane and then all of a sudden we hit with talk dirty to me going right to a number one poison song and then bust into then we just start busting into some great hits and and great stuff and then i got a brand new version of like a sweet home alabama and then i do some sublime we throw that in there and mix it in with all the poison stuff and the new rock of love stuff and it's pretty awesome yeah that sounds awesome with with the poison songs i'm always curious does anybody do you own all the rights to all the poison stuff, or do you guys share that? No, we got, with, with Poison, we were blessed. You know, one of the biggest blessings that we ever had that so many bands don't realize when they're young, one of the blessings we had is we kept all of our publishing. you got to remember, Poison started out as an independent band. We were just some independent rock band that made our own first record, and then it just, we were the first independent band that ever had four million records sold on an independent little label that we started out of, you know, uh, basically, I don't want to say our basement, but our basement, and then our first song was Cry Tough, and it did okay, and then Talk Dirty to Me became a top top 10 single and it just no one expected it back in that day and age because that just you had to be on a major label and so when everyone's always talking about that that time we were fortunate enough and i say this both as a band we own all of our publishing but also as it, it isn't horrible when it comes to uh, here we just crossed the 30 million mark it's a good day yeah that's what i was gonna say for an indie band to kind of come up from a like oh yeah we you know we got a little bit of success this song's you know making it into the top 10 and then to get to go all the way to uh, 30 million albums sold that's that's a pretty uh, impressive career trajectory there and, and you know what's cool about it? i say this i go back to we're one of those bands and at least i know this with myself solo we're, we're really a band that gives we leave 150 percent out on that stage there's never i'm going to tell you right now even in my sickest even when a couple years ago when i was sick and i could come back i just can't go on that stage and i'll be passionate and thankful for what i get to do and i think the fans realize that 
instantly. Like it's not like a hey, we're making our way through town. This it's really a party, and and you know, luckily this happens to just be a Saturday night. But even I'll give you an example. I played um, a big run through Canada, and we were there on Mondays and Tuesdays. I walked out. I said, let's just consider this Saturday night, and we made a party out of it, no matter when it was. But the fact this is going to be a pre New Year's Eve party, and it is going to be awesome. Honestly, it is. Yeah, I, I have no doubt. I think it's going to be just a killer show. I can't wait. And I, yeah, I think it's cool that you give the you know that you're not you're at the level where you could be a little bit crazy like an Axl Rose or somebody like that you know we don't know where you are or what drugs you're on or what you're up to but you could... <laughs> that's my other that's the other half of the year exactly yeah the year's a good time but at least when you're on the road it's not like you hide out on a bus you know and jump out do a few songs and jump back on the bus and leave it seems like you really have an appreciation for the fans and you give the fans an opportunity to kind of you know at least a few of them to, to get to spend some time with you and, and connect with you, which I think it's awesome when artists do that once they've hit the point where they don't technically need to, but they still understand that, you know, that's where they're at or that's why they're where they're at because of the fans. Yeah, I will never forget that. And after our first song, that's the first thing I thank everybody. I say, listen, I thank you all for letting me live my dream out and being here. And in return for that, like, I'm hoping you and I can do something great where we have a couple people call in and sing or do something crazy with nothing but a good time. And maybe what we do is we bring them up on the bus afterwards to say hello. Or, you know, we could do a great contest where someone comes up and sings a song with us. We do this all the time. And it really, it, it's a very... Uh, it, I call it, I'm, I'm three generations of a tight-knit community of, of fans that like to come out and have a great time. That's awesome. Somebody, uh, one of our fans wanted to know their quote was, why rock of love, dot, 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 why, question mark. <laughs> why rock of love do it, or why rock of love, yeah, I guess that's what they would mean, right? Yeah, probably like, yeah, why did you choose to do rock of love? I would have well, loved to do rock of love. Yeah, my, Rock of Love for me, honestly, the, here's what it was. For me, at that point in my life, I had just become single. Um, you know, and the first time they came around with it, I just wasn't ready. I'm like, I'm, I've never done anything like this before. Most of the shows that I'd ever done was like Nashville Star, because as much as I love rock and roll, I, I also like my Southern rock and my country music, too. And so... I had done stuff like that, but I never did anything like this. And the first time they presented it to me, I turned it down because I just wasn't ready. It wasn't, they, you know what I mean? And then, and then probably about six months later, they came back and said, you are the person. How do we make this work? And I said, it's got to be in the here and now. Let's just go. And, and, and you guys, I don't want to know the girls. I just want to come in there and have fun and see if something great comes from it. And it ended up being Viacom and VH1's number one all-time show. That yeah, that's that's pretty big. It's nice to know you can uh, branch out and try new things, and then have them also be wildly successful. That's got to feel good. Yeah, th- that is, man. I'm glad you said. Let me add to that. That's why I tell people, you know, even if I wouldn't have, let's say, technically made it in a band, I still love playing music. I would have played music on the weekends because it's what I love to do. And there's no shame in that. I said it's just fortunately that I happen to get to do something I love and uh, and, and it's had longevity and, and success to it. And that's a, that's a really great day, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. That's awesome. And speaking of branching out, too, I mean, you've got a lot going on. You've got uh, our people that work here at PetSmart in Billings are very excited because of you. they carry your Pets Rock line, and so they're excited you're coming. Absolutely. And you know what? The, the brand new Pets Rock line is one of their number one lines, and I live on a ranch, and, and I've got, you know, I'm a big motorcycle guy. I've got motocross track, the Harleys for the street, and I've been riding dirt bikes again since I've been a kid, but on the ranch, I've got horses and dogs and cats, and I, I love my animals and take good care of them, and I just came to PetSmart and formed a great partnership, and luckily it is one of their most successful lines and that's a i'm not going to avoid it takes a lot of hard work to get lucky but it, i'm thankful and, and next year when i come back and see you i'm going to go into pet smart and do like an in-store signing where i can meet the fans too that'll be cool yeah and meet the pets yep. too the fans and, and their, meet the their pet. partners. i meet lots of pets believe me yeah people go up on the site they see it they're like this guy's crazy <laughs> yeah there are pets <laughs> everywhere so what yep. else so we've got the tour we got you you getting your rock on you're out there hitting the road with that you got the Pet Smart Pets Rock line going on. What else is in the works? What else do you have going right now? Two, two new things that are really pressing coming up quickly. 
Um, I got a brand new show comes out in May. It's called the Rock My RV, and it is huge. And it, when people see it, they're going to love it. I've lived in an RV all of my young life, and especially all my professional adult life. And uh, the show is really, really fun. And then I've got the new record called Good Songs, Great Friends, with everyone from Skinner to Aerosmith to Lil Jon to Margaritaville with Buffett to Kiss, Van Halen, they all came on and jam with me. And then the, the autobiography comes out. Uh, and that's uh, Simon & Schuster releases that in May as well. Man, busy, busy, busy. A lot of stuff happening there. What? So with the RV thing, do you have? Do you change your RVs up regularly, or do you have like a totally pimped out Brett Michaels RV that's like your go-to travel wagon? We have a go-to, right? It's a good pimped out go-to. And I go down to Nashville, and we go to Celebrity Coach and Integrity. We build them out. And I build them about, realistically, it's about a three- to five-year uh, keep on each one of these. You you build them and you buy them out, and then once they, you know, I put, I tour nine months of the year, so there's literally probably I don't know, I want to say three to four hundred, maybe five hundred thousand miles on the old diesel pusher, and then it's time to uh, to let that one go and build out another one. And that's what I was going to tell you. We've got to bring some fans up because I've got the brand new Prevost the three, and it's they don't even this one is the brand new bus. It's built out. We'll let them come up, get some pictures and hang out a few minutes on the bus and, and have a good time. That's where I'm gonna. I'm just gonna wait for your bus to pull up, and I'm just gonna walk on like I own the place, and I'm not gonna get off. I'm just gonna live Done. on your the, bus. The party starts then, right? <laughs> exactly. And then we ride it right through the show. I'll have a I'll have a box full of goodies for us to enjoy on the bus, and I'll just come <laughs> in and I'll like a, a po- host my own party on Brett Michaels' bus. Have you speaking of the crazy RVs? You're obviously into that, you know, with the show coming up. Have you seen or heard about the the Will Smith one? That's like a double decker. It, it's like a house. Have you seen his RV? Yeah, it- yeah, and it's crazy. And I said, you know, now me, I'm a guy that also, I'm thinking, that's amazing looking. Now, if you could take that to a movie set or wherever they move that, that's amazing. Unfortunately, here in the U.S., I'm thinking, you better be pretty careful being up top there, uh, going under. If you go like me through a couple of them low-lying uh, underpasses, you might want to be real careful that the height restrictions are good, or that could be a, a single-level bus real quick. Yeah, exactly. You, it's a quick remodel. Yeah, just take the right yeah. road. Road and you've changed it from a single to a double to a single. I like that. Real quickly. It, definitely. Uh, what's going on with your health? Obviously, people people keep asking about that. They're concerned because of the, uh, you know, we obviously know you're involved with uh, the diabetes because you have it and you uh, help educate and, you know, talk to kids and, and work with them. But then also you had the, uh, the emergency stuff back in 2010. Is everything good? Are you completely healthy now? I think so. You know, again, I go to therapy. Uh, about once a month, I go through therapy to do stuff that that just helps to keep everything. Let's say uh, the, all the right parts working. And it's weird because I've been—I say this—I've been a, a diabetic since I've been six. I'm insulin dependent, so I do the five shots a day. And then, and then all of a sudden, I had the emergency appendectomy, and then two weeks later, that that life-threatening, crazy subarachnoid brain hemorrhage, the which was. I don't even have words for it. Luckily, grace of God and good medical attention, I'm still here. And then, and then they went in and did the heart surgery. Um, and all of this has been the, the same hospital did two of the major operations. And I'm just thankful they knew, really knew what they were doing and were able to do it quickly enough. And like I said, every day, I've always looked at life good and try to be positive. But every day since then, man, I embrace the fact that I'm still here and, and happy to be here. Yeah, that's, that's what you hear a lot from people that have those sorts of uh, you know whether the, whether it be near death or just you know uh, kind of a wake up call situation like that it really kind of changes your perspective and you realize you know it's it's every day's a gift every day and and like I said it's it's one of those things going above and beyond just music when you see and I, and this is hard to describe until you're at the show when you see the show on the stage and and you you're there in the theater I make it feel like we're it is a party it's a celebration of life it rocks and everyone leaves there three generations of great fans going that was an awesome time that's good should i i, I work closely with a uh, a doctor here in town dr fuller should i bring him onto the bus just in case something happens anything could happen i would say invite him down it's the holidays and if it goes good we party 
if it goes bad, I've got someone that's got my back. Good, exactly. <laughs> that, yeah, we will have Dr. Fuller. I'll make him wear his jacket so he looks like a real doctor and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounds like a great, great idea. You know what's crazy? I just thought about we could have like a diabetes symposium here because, ironically, Wilford Brimley lives down in Wyoming but comes to Billings on an almost weekly basis to play poker and hang out with people. So we could get the uh, Wilford Brimley old school oatmeal diabetes guy and you, and you could do like a you know mashup of like the old school you know diabetes and new school. I think that'd be a cool picture of the two of you together. A mashup, it is a great actor, uh, and and also a a, a, a pretty serious, like me, a pretty severe or brittle diabetic, right? And uh, we could do a mashup of a complete. And it could let, can let me add one thing: my Life Rocks Foundation will do a charity element for real. And uh, locally, between you and me, we're going to find uh, we're going to find a couple diabetic kids to send to camp that are just getting it, and it really freaks them out. You know, when they get it, they don't know what to do, and they're yeah. like, "What just happened?" And that's what my Life Rocks Foundation does. We do a great charity event, and we send them to camp, totally funded, and it'll be on me. And you help me find them, and we'll make make it happen. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I can tell. I never really thought about that. Cause I have a friend who, uh, Doctor Fuller, who will be your standby doctor at your show he diagnosed a friend of mine but he was an adult and he just got it and it, i mean it was pretty freaky for him as an adult so i can only imagine you know a kid not really fully understanding you know how the body works or anything getting this diagnosis and having to change your life so dramatically that's yeah that's got to be a huge thing for a child it is and that's what the life rocks foundation does i mean it does a lot of stuff for a lot of different people wounded warriors childhood cancer it deals with a lot of things but di- me, me being a diabetic uh, i I go and visit these kids all the time, and I say, listen, you know, I have two daughters. I said, the one's pre-diabetic. Here's some things. I said, I've lived a great life. I've, I've got a chance to go out and do what I want. You're just going to have to keep mentally and physically on top of it and manage it, and, and that's what we do, and that's what we'll do. We'll find a couple people that are newly diagnosed that are, you know, need to go to camp and learn about it or need to go somewhere, and we'll do that. We'll, we'll find them. We'll raise the money, and then we'll pick them out and send them in the summer. That's awesome. What a cool, what a great organization. I mean, it sounds, even people that don't even know your music or like your music, they should still come to your show just because you're such a nice guy. You should get all, just everybody in the city should buy a ticket, whether they know who you are or not. Absolutely. And you know what it is, too, beyond that? It's, I think at this point in your career, when you, you get to where you're, here and I'm saying we as of last year we crossed the 30 million mark on records sold. People know that when when we come to town, it's a great time. And I think it it's not just the music; it goes beyond that to the to the party and the the, the good time that they have. And and I think people will totally dig it. Yeah, I I think it's I'm so excited. Is this your first time in Billings? No, can- no, we've been there uh, before on, on several occasions, and uh, not just at the arena, but also to come back and uh, and did a couple of the big when they had a couple of the big fairs and stuff like that. It was great, and then one year it was uh, I believe it was Kenny Chesney and ourself or myself, and we did something there at the arena, and it was great. That's awesome. Yeah, is this, I mean, yeah. this seems kind of like Brett Michaels' territory here. Just a bunch of you know people that like to have a good time and uh, party hard and enjoy themselves and and not beat the crap out of each other. You know, just nice That's people. A- <laughs> That's a good day right there. A good party, a good... And like I said, this is sort of the pre-New Year's Eve party. Then you've got Sunday to repair, and then Monday you party. Again, you know what I mean? But you got Saturday night to throw it down. Yeah, what, what's what's a better way to prepare for a real party than partying with Brett Michaels for a crazy Get Your Rock On show? I mean, it, it doesn't get much better than that. No, it'll be great. Well, like I told you, Kim, and I can't thank you enough for having us. I'm glad we were able to work it out um, and be able to get there, and especially uh, on a Saturday night. And it's uh, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be crazy. Brett, we can't wait till you get here to town. Thanks so much for taking the time for us. And uh, I, I just want you to understand how excited everybody is to have you here in town. So thanks for doing it. And, again, thanks for all you do for uh, for the charities, for, for people with diabetes, for everybody out there. You're such a a nice guy and, and such a fun party mentality sort of guy to have here for this pre 
pre-New Year's Eve celebration. So we can't wait for you to get here, Brett. Travel safe, and uh, it was great talking to you, man. appreciate it. You got it. Hey, thank you very much for having me on. I'm excited to see you. The Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10 on Billings' number one hit music station, Hot 101.9.